What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and during this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest project Elixir ROM version 3.8 and this is the official build 21st May 2023 build actually and based on Android 13 as usual. In the Android version it has this project Elixir logo and it shows the wallpaper that you're using. By the way I'm using the stock wallpaper and this is how it looks. It shows the device is officially supported and the maintainer is Zaid Khan so huge thanks to the developers of this ROM. The Android version is is android 13 if you make this clock to one o'clock you will see the android 13's easter egg if you just keep tapping on it the security patch here is latest of may 5th 2023 the elixir version shows as 3.8 and this is the 4.14 aginsa kernel as the stock kernel here the slm state is showing as enforcing on the bottom it shows the build date and stuff it's 21st may 2023 build in the system settings this is how it looks like we have the thermal profiles and stuff here but we also get a system updated and this is how it looks like and you can get early access and stuff by paying them i guess and you can donate to the developers from here let me go back we have the thermal profiles and in here we have multiple thermal profiles like the default benchmark browser camera dialer gaming and streaming here we have the gestures and right here we get the swipe group screenshot and stuff that is working fine we have the share edit and delete option and in apps like where there is a lot of scrolling space there will be the capture more feature and stuff we have the quickly open camera the system navigation gestures in the settings of it we have the back gesture haptic the full screen gestures back gesture animation the pill length you can customize and the swipe to invoke assistant is also working fine we have the left edge right edge customization but there is no pill radius customization here let me go back we have the two button and three button navigation both of them has invert layout options we have the one-handed mode as well works perfectly fine we have the press and hold power button and you can choose it to power menu or digital assistant depending on your liking let me go back we have the playback control double tap and the adaptive playback option we also have the live translate feature in case you need that now let's talk about the stock launcher and here this is how it looks like it is the launcher 3 present by default and we have the screenshot the google lens and the clear all button and also it shows up the ram usage status and there is a background blur and hello effect if you're noticing in the recent panel looks so dope and in the misc settings on the stock launcher settings we have the use taskbar allow home screen rotation and the restart option and the background blur depth and stuff we can customize in the suggestions we can disable them and you can block some apps if you want in the recents we have all the options like the screenshot memory info lens clear all and even shape phone to clear all task option is there and we have the background opacity changing option in the app drawer we have the themed icons app search bar icon labels in drawer and the row height and the background opacity customization in the home screen settings we have the lock layout add up icons to the home screen double tap to sleep wallpaper scrolling and zooming at a glance and bunch of more features in case you need those like the music search themed icons etc in the icons we have the icon pack changing option as well you can add any icons from play store or something like that and we have the notification dots as well you can enable it from here and the icon size font size max lines for app label you can customize now let me show you the stock camera of this ROM. Well, you are getting the MIUI camera right out of the box here and that's just awesome. And swiping up will get you more options like the vlog mode, the short video, panorama, slow motion, time lapse, AI watermark, dual video, all these other options. And even you can edit and add multiple things over here. Let me go back. We have the ultra wide angle lens working perfectly and the 1x and the 2x telephoto zooming option is also working great. I hope you could see that. And also, if you're wondering about the super macro lens, yes, as you can see, they are working perfectly fine. Super macro is a really amazing option, I feel, for the Redmi Note 10 Pro. And even for video settings, we have up to 4K 30 FPS option in case you need all of those. And even in the pro mode, in the video settings, we can control the white balance, focus, shutter speed, ISO, everything. And with that, we'll get up to 4K 30 FPS option. And that's just awesome. In case you are wondering about the portrait mode and the front camera, yes, the front camera is working perfectly. So let's try to take a quick portrait picture. And here, if I just try to open it and go to the info, as you can see, this is a 16.2 megapixel selfie. So yeah, the portrait picture and stuff is working perfectly fine. The background bokeh is working great, no issues. And with the MIUI camera, the camera clarity and stuff is great. No problems even for 64 megapixel mode and stuff, even the night mode should work great here. So the MIUI camera is present by default and that's one of the best things in my opinion.
Now let's talk about the stock launcher a little bit because swiping up will get you to the app drawer, no issues. To the left of the home screen, we get the Google's Discover page. And of course, you can search for any particular app that you are looking for. And here in the stock launcher, it shows the date and the weather and stuff. And the widgets are working fine. But some of the widgets like the battery widget and stuff are there, but they aren't working properly. As you can see right now, I'm connected to a Bluetooth device, but still it shows this loading. Even if I re-add them, it doesn't do anything or resize them. So yeah, that's how it is. But clock widget and stuff is there and the animation of opening and closing that is working great. So other Android 13 widgets will be working perfectly fine. And even this subscriber account widget that I have added is working. Swiping down anywhere in the home screen will get you to the quick setting panel. And in here, this is how it looks like in the quick setting panel. It stays light in the like normal light theme and we have the dark mode as well, the dark theme. When you enable that, the quick setting panel and everything in the UI will turn dark. And here, let me show you which toggles that I have added. I have the Wi-Fi, mobile data, the Bluetooth toggle as well. And the Bluetooth battery actually shows up on the series bar and the quick setting panel as well. You can see on the toggles as well, the battery percentage of your Bluetooth device. And here I have the flashlight, auto rotate, night light, and the battery saver, the Google Home controls, and we have the screen recorder. And this is how it looks like. You can record the device audio and microphone audio. Show touches option is there. We have the skip timer as well. And the low quality and stuff, all these features are there for the screen recording. The data saver, the dark theme, anti-flicker or the dc dimming mode is there and the always on display toggle is there, nearby share, 100 mode, hotspot and the airplane mode and the do not disturb. Surprisingly, there is no refresh rate toggle over here, like I cannot simply switch the refresh rate I guess, but there is the live display as well, you can edit and add and even the mode toggles are there. But then again, the refresh rate you cannot really switch, but there is a live display mode where you can actually put the display to outdoor bright sun mode, which will make the display really, really bright. And on the bottom of the quick setting panel to the right side, we have the power menu, which appears like this. You can go into the advanced and directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from here if you want. One thing I hate about the quick setting panel is that date and time size a little bit bigger, I guess. It's colliding into this emergency calls because I don't have a SIM card over here. But I think if you have a SIM card, it will be perfectly fine looking. But as of right now, for me, I don't have a SIM card, so it looks a little weird. One thing I have to say, I restored my Google app data backup and they did restore perfectly fine. I have all the SMS and stuff restored properly over here. No issues with Google app data backup restoring. Let's talk about the basic things first. So safety net and stuff, if you're wondering about those, yes, safety net is passing right out of the box here. So banking apps will not be an issue on this ROM. Also, the DRM info stays as L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. And the IR Bluster is working fine here. Google Photos does have the Pixel Unlimited Backup, so you can backup your photos and videos unlimitedly here. Overall, the settings panel looks so beautiful here. You can see the fonts and stuff of the Project Elixir. Looks so dope and you, it would be identical if you have used the Project Elixir ROM earlier. And here we have the display settings. We have the brightness level, adaptive brightness, extra dim feature. And the lock screen settings is right there. We have the privacy controls, show sensitive content and stuff is there. And we have the show device controls, control from lock device, double line clock always show time and info and always on charging even wake screen for notification option is there if you need that the screen timeout is there up to 30 minutes there is also the screen attention if you need that in the dark theme we can only enable that from here and we have the display size and text of android 13 we have the full screen apps you can set per apps to full screen if you want Nightlight option is there and the colors, you can actually change it to natural, boosted, saturated. If you scroll down more, we have the full RGB control. So you can do that if you want. And we have the width kind of settings and there is the allow window level blurs. That's the global blur, I guess. And we have the auto rotate screen. Smooth display is the 120Hz display and yes, 120Hz all over the UI is actually working fine. I can feel the refresh rate over here is really fast. No issues whatsoever that I have faced. As you can see, everything just switching like apps and stuff, it's perfectly smooth. We have the double tap to wake and stuff. They should be working perfectly fine. Let me show you the essence. This is where you will find the customizations of this ROM. There are a plethora of them and you can skip this part if you want from the timestamps. On the top side, we have this kind of logo, the settings kind of logo, it has an uh, animation in case you are wondering. And we have the welcome to essence text and it shows some random text over here. It shows somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known. And if you go into it again, it changes the text. It shows if you do not risk anything, you risk even more. So pretty much some motivational quotes or lines appear over here randomly. Looks so dope. And we have the no more about us section and the donate section here as well. 
in the themes we have the card style or you can change it to default if you want and we have the use custom theme but let me show you these are the custom themes you can apply and in terms of body fonts there are plethora of options and i like the fact that whenever you are going into one of the options it doesn't lag at all it goes straight sometimes i have seen on the redmi note 10 pro it lags a little bit but yeah here it's perfectly smooth and we have the nothing dot font and stuff if you want that one plus rate every font that you can wish for should be here in terms of icon packs these are the options i am using the rounded one but you can also go with the oxygenous outline etc options let me go back we have the signal icon styles and there are plethora of options for that i am using with the stroke but i don't have a sim card but you can use any of the signal icons and even the wi-fi icon style i have been using it again with the stroke and you can choose from any of them here we have the lock screen in here we have the double tap to sleep ripple effect edge lighting for the lock screen and you can have it always trigger on pulse there is the notification color and you can change it to wallpaper color accent color etc if you want we have the media cover art and even the blood amount you can customize we have the screen of animation lock screen charging info on the bottom we have the fingerprint authentication vibration and stuff we have the status bar settings in here we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar quick pull down is there you can customize from right or left reticker is there and the app colored background for reticker is also there you can enable it we have the clock and date customization in here we have the ampm style changing option even the date format you can change from right here i have enabled all of those with that this is how it looks and here we have the 4g icon show wi-fi type and here if you're noticing it shows five on the wi-fi icon so that means i'm connected to a five gigahertz wi-fi we have the small mobile data type icon and the show data disabled icon as well icon manager is there headset bluetooth that's icons you can enable from here let me go back we have the traffic indicators battery style and plethora of options for the battery style are still here i have been using with the icon landscape right but you can also use the other options we have the battery percentage you can choose it to inside the icon or next to the icon or you can hide it if you want in the quick settings we have the uh, quick setting style and you can change it between these many options i like the outline option they look really cool like this one but yeah you can go for other options like the two tone accent color pop shaded cyberpunk etc options are also there and we have the brightness slider style as well you can put it to outline style and stuff if you want and this is how it will look with that and you can also change it to filled thin and the default style vibrate on toggle touch is there and we have the quick setting header image like up to 11 header image you can get and this is how it will look and there is a background transparency of the quick setting panel as well but it needs a system ui restart and we have the brightness slider you can have it on show always even the position you can change it to bottom auto brightness icon is there there is the data usage the four stop button and stuff is there require unlocking to use the sensitive tiles option is there you can enable it for privacy in the gestures we have the swipe to screenshot and stuff all the gestures which are present in the system settings in the misc settings we have the enable advanced restart Long press power button toggle torch is also there and we have the ignore window secure flags in call vibration options if you scroll down more we have the hide icon of essence and the game space is also there so you can add any game that you want to have the gaming overlay and stuff so that's it about the customization section right now let me show you the wallpapers and styles and this is how it looks like you can change the wallpapers from here we only get this on device wallpaper and you get 16 colors up to with the wallpaper and the basic colors and there is a dark themed themed icons app grid is there up to 6 by 10 and we have the system icon packs as well right here and the system fonts are the same fonts which were there in the customization settings inside battery we have really really amazing options like we get this green kind of battery bar look we have the battery usage the battery saver battery manager battery optimization but here we also get to see the battery temperature the maximum battery capacity current battery capacity and the charging cycles as well so everything every detail of your battery's health you can get an idea of from right here and that is just awesome because these kind of battery info you do not simply get in most roms so i feel this kind of battery settings is one of the best for me at least and yes fast charging and stuff is working fine now let me talk about the battery life here it shows a lot less i would say but definitely you will get seven plus hours of screen on time with your usage this is totally estimated numbers guys but yeah with the aqua battery app this is how it is we have the screen on as six hours and 48 minutes standby time is about 48 hours so that's about two days worth of standby even the combine use is 23 hours 31 minutes that's about 24 hours so one day of combined usage and in the health section for me after two years it has 78 percent battery health left here it shows this is all again estimated i have about 300 plus cycles you just saw so with that the battery life that i'm getting is good enough i have to say 
In the sound and vibration settings, this is how it looks like. If you scroll down more, we have the dial pad tone, screen locking sound, charging sound, charging vibration, etc. But app volume control is there and we have the me sound enhancer as well. And there is a youth edition and stuff and there are much more other options. If you want to choose these presets, you can. The pop, jazz, etc. kind of sound preset and also the scene option is there. There is the smart scene, music, video and voice you can choose. Also the clear speaker option is there and we have the haptic feedback to change the intensity of vibration. While you are playing music, this is how the volume panel looks like guys and you can actually change the output device from right here and there is the app volume as well and also you can like normally increase or decrease the volume from here and you can expand the volume panel just like this and let me show you right now in the lock screen this is how it looks like there is the background blur of the album art and you can play and pause from right here but it doesn't have the android 14 kind of animation for play and pause and we have this kind of wavy bar the seek bar and you can also change the output device from here everything is so smooth and let me show you here in the quick setting panel also this is how it looks and you can just play and pause from here or you can just close it i guess in the settings of the security we have the touch fingerprint to unlock power button instantly locks and the scramble pin layout and if you turn this feature off you, it will actually unlock with the fingerprint scanner when you wake up the screen by double tapping or something so i feel this is a really necessary feature for a lot of people let me set up the face unlock quickly in the mode settings we have the app lock and in here if you go and you can enable any app that you want to lock from right here now let me show you the locking and unlocking stuff and for that i'll just double tap here and it just goes to sleep and double tap to wake and stuff if you're wondering about that it is working fine there is a lock screen shortcuts and they are like one tap it doesn't need to be like held some of the roms does have that tap and hold on the shortcuts but here you can just tap it and it will work and let me show you the face unlock first here yeah it actually unlocks really fast let me show you one more time has this black border on the front camera whenever you're using the front camera that's really nice now let me show you the thing bits kind of speed and here i'll just wake up the screen but yeah it works even without waking up because i have that touch finger bit to unlock always and as you can see the thing kind of speed is perfectly fast no issues whatsoever that you will face with the thing scanner speed as you can see it unlocks perfectly fast and it's really convenient experience to have this really fast unlocking right now let me enable the always on display and the always on display works like this this is how it looks like the brightness i would say dimmer and i would say it's fine because always on display will consume a lot of battery if it's not dim enough this is a really decent always on display and this is how it looks like but the lock screen clock i don't think you can actually change that there is no options even in the themes or the lock screen settings to actually change the clock and that's how it is right now let me once again show that and here yes double tap to wake is also working fine from the lock screen and even after that the face unlock is working fine now let me show you the app lock actually and here if i just try to open the telegram app as you can see the fingerprint scanner works perfectly fine let's try to open this 17 track app and yeah it does work perfectly fine it opens the app so locking and unlocking stuff is working perfectly fine on this ROM. Now one thing I have to say, even with the test UFO website with Chrome, it actually shows up to 80 FPS. But let me show you one thing. Once I open it with a browser like Opera, as you can see, the test UFO website actually shows up to 120 FPS or 120 Hertz. So 120 Hertz is actually working fine with the other browsers like Opera and stuff. I don't know why it's happening for the Redmi Note 10 Pro, but yeah, this is how it is. 120 Hertz, as you can see right now, is there with the latest 2 fu website with the Opera browser. So if you try other browsers, it should be working great with a high refresh rates. And even if you open multiple apps like Twitter and stuff. If so let me show you the Twitter scrolling. As you can see, the scrolling is working fine. It takes a little bit time to actually load stuff. But yeah, otherwise, I would say it's a really like, good amount of scrolling kind of experience for a device like the Redmi Note 10 Pro. And here are the Android 20 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to get you an idea about the overall UI performance. So let me in the comments what you guys think about the latest build of the Project Elixir ROM version 3.8 on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. I feel this is one of the best optimized and one of the most stable ROMs 
for the Redmi Note 10 Pro. And I have to say, I have daily drive this Project Elixir ROM a lot in the past, and my experience has been one of the most stable so far. And still, with the latest update, it rocks. And on the Redmi Note 10 Pro, it's a really good experience with the latest Project Elixir ROM. That's how I feel it in the comments. What do you guys think? If you want your friends to know about this ROM, you can share this video with them and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from Gary Index signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.